Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I am driving today to see my folks for Thanksgiving and for a family reunion. So apologies for a lot of background sound, I'm sure, but the 10.5 release notes came out today. Uh, just for your information, I do not have 10.5. It hasn't been you know, sent to my car yet, so I'm not driving it yet, but I'll certainly do one while we are driving. And uh, But anyway, I'm recording this on my computer, on the road, so apologies for the background sound, and also apologies if you hear our pug, Kona. She may be breathing heavily back there. <laughs> it's like, geez, if it sounds like somebody has been smoking way too many cigarettes, that's uh, exactly what's been going on with her, so she smokes too much, right? Yeah, <laughs> Misinformation says yes. Uh, okay, so anyway, well, let's go over the, the beta 10.5 release notes. I will also put a card, and I will make the very last... The, the card at the end of the video, the 10.4 release, because this touches on precision and recall again, and I go into some detail on that in the 10.4 release notes. So anyway, let's talk about this. We have improved VRU, or Vulnerable Road User, pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists, crossing velocity error by 20% from improved quality in our auto labeling. So <clears throat> what that means is just side-to-side -side motion. So, for example, a pedestrian going across an intersection in a, a crosswalk area or something, it has a 20% improved quality of making sure that it's got a correct velocity prediction, which means that the car will either stop or go at appropriate times. That's basically what it means. Notice that they are talking about auto labeling, which is very cool. So they're, they're constantly working on refining their auto labeling. We will see that several times in, this, uh, in these release notes, actually. So that's very cool. Next one is improved static world predictions, road lines, edges, and lane connectivity by up to 13% using a new static world auto labeler and adding 165,000 auto labeled videos. So right away, right away again, auto labeling, that's the real key to what they're doing right now. They have so much data that if they had to manually label this stuff, it would never work. So they're auto labeling and they're auto, they have a new auto labeler, which means that it must be doing a better job and uh, they have been able to improve this static world predictions by 13%. So that basically means they're going to have a refined sense of where the edges of the road are, where parked cars are, you know, I guess trees on the side of the road, edges. I, I like this fact that they talk about lane connectivity, which means that um, they're talking about when you come across an intersection that where there's multiple lanes and merging and things like that, I assume. So, right, obviously all of this is just what I'm reading from these notes. I don't have any inside information about Tesla or from them. All right, the next item, improved cone and sign detections by uprevving the generalized static object network with 15,000 more video clips and adjusting oversampling and overweighting strategies. Uh, increase of 4.5 precision and 10.4% recall. So if you remember, <clears throat> precision is the number of well, let's go to the definition right here. Precision is basically a false positives measure and recall is false negatives measure. So what that means here is that the precision you're getting a reduction of false positives, which means that you're going to not detect as many cones or signs or things like that that don't exist. But more importantly than that, you're not going, you're going to reduce the number of false negatives. That's the 10.4% recall improvement. So you're gonna improve the rate of not seeing, right, so not seeing a sign that actually is there. Right? So that's, in the real world, recall is actually much more important than precision in general, most, most cases. And <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you don't pass a sign that's a speed limit sign or pass a construction zone sign or pass construction cones and not see it. So the improvement in the recall is actually very good. They are using, they're uprevving the generalized static object network, which I assume means that their neural networks that they're using for static object detection has been improved and they threw 15,000 more video clips at it. So, and adjusted oversampling and overweighting strategies, which means that, you know, 99 percent of the time you're not passing by important signs or, or construction cones or anything like that. So what they've had to do is rebalance the, um, the, the sampling. So if you, again, if you go back to that last video that I did, I talk about this. If you have a neural network, if you have 99% of the time where it won't detect a traffic cone or something like that, because there isn't one there, it can just learn that it's 99% accurate just by always saying that there's not a traffic cone. So basically they've overweighted the sampling. They've thrown a lot more samples 
of traffic cones or signs or things like that at the training network to make sure that it trains properly. That's so cool. that's what that part is, I didn't right? Think about that. Yeah, it's very interesting. Sparse data sets are very challenging for for neural networks when they're really, really overweighted one side or the other. So yeah, <laughs> so it really does actually make a big difference. All right, the next one is improved cut-in detection network by 5.5% to help reduce false slowdowns. So that should be very beneficial. Lane hates that, right? You hate the when it has phantom braking, right? So not a fan. <laughs> not a fan of the phantom braking. So essentially what it must be doing is thinking that a car is going to pull in in front of you. And so it's improved that network by 5.5% to help reduce that from happening. Yes. So <clears throat> yeah, that'll be good when we get 10.5. We will definitely give it a ride and we'll see what happens when we get 10, uh, 10 10.5 on our car. The next one, this is actually the biggest note I think in the entire release notes, and that is enabled emergency collision avoidance maneuvering. So in shadow mode. So in shadow mode basically means that it's not doing it yet, but it's making predictions and seeing what human beings do. And it's, use, it's going to use that data to train itself. <clears throat> But emergency collision avoidance maneuvering is something that um, James Law, I did a video, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description or a card someplace, it's hard to do on the road, but we did a, we did a video a long time ago and he, he's very much all about the cars avoiding emergency vehicles like police cars or ambulances or fire trucks. And so this is something where Tesla is obviously putting in some effort now and they're doing this only in shadow mode, so it's not going to actually affect the way that the car drives, but I would expect in 10.6 or 10.7 or some near future release that they will enable this once they realize that they have trained it well enough that it behaves like a human being. So basically that means slow down and get over. <laughs> James Law will be happy for me for giving that shout out there. You, you want to slow down the car, you want to get out of the way of the emergency vehicle, that's the safest thing you can do. And so hopefully what will happen is that your autopilot will learn how to do that itself. So that is huge, huge news. The next one is enabled behavior to lane change away from merges when safe to do so. This is huge. I do this all the time myself just because this is the kind of thing where, again, a right-hand driving country, but you're on the highway and you're in the far right-hand lane and a merge is coming on and you see cars about to merge into your lane, well, what do you do? You move into the left-hand lane in that highway situation, as long, of course, as there aren't cars there, which is what the wind safe to do so. But that means that you get out of the way of potentially causing a, a snarl up right when people are merging. So that is going to be huge. That is long-term route planning on, in my mind, not like navigation, but just thinking 20 or 30 seconds ahead, which I have been very much about, you know, Tesla has not the autopilot has not done that very well so far. So I'm super excited about that. That will be really, really cool to try that out. I hope it does it. I manually do it all the time. I press the, the, the turn signal to make it move away, but it will be nice if autopilot could do that itself. That's, that's actually a really important one too. All right, improved merge object detection recall by using multimodal object prediction at intersections. So again, if we go to our recall, that is removing false negatives. So that means that it will see more true things. It won't produce a negative when it should be producing a positive. Uh, so object detection during merging, which means that it should see cars that are merging or it should see perhaps the end of the, the, the lane lines coming up. <laughs> it, it tends to have a really bad tendency has a very bad tendency to sit in the merge lane until the last possible second and then jump into the, the lane that it's supposed to be moving into. Uh, multimodal object prediction, I assume, just means that they're using different kinds of modes of object prediction. So instead of just one model for object prediction, it's actually doing multiple models instead. All right, the next one, improved control for merges by increasing smoothness of arrival time constraints and considering possible merging objects beyond visibility. So I assume that means when you're merging around a corner, right, beyond visibility, uh, because a lot of merges and highway entrances and exits involve going around a very significant turn. So you might not be able to see what's up ahead. So hopefully what it'll do is not accelerate and then come around the corner and see a bunch of stopped cars and they have to brake very, very rapidly. So nice smoothness, that would be good. Uh, arrival time constraints just means that it's making predictions about when it's going to actually merge on or off the highway or other type of 
street or something. So basically, it's just trying to smooth everything out, which is going to be all to the good. <laughs> smoother, everything smoother is better. You don't want your car jerking around because that's pretty scary as a passenger. All right, the next one, improved lane changes by allowing larger deceleration limit in short deadline situations. So I think what that means, I, I'm taking a little bit of a guess here, but I think what that means is as the car begins to make a lane change, so let's say you're in the left-hand lane and you want to move into the right-hand lane, at the same moment the car in front of you, either in the left or right-hand lanes, begins to decelerate, to brake, I think that the, what this is going to do is allow the car to continue to make the lane change but brake as it's making the lane change instead of having to either bail on the lane change or fully make the lane change and then decelerate. So it will allow it to brake. Uh, it says deceleration, so I would assume it would also accelerate as it did it too if that made it safer, but that it could, it could brake and lane change at the same time. So it's like rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time, I guess, for your car. <laughs> Misinformation is happy because she can't do that, so <laughs> she's jealous of people who can pat their tummies and rub their heads at the same time. No, pat their head and rub their stomach, whatever that thing is. All right, anyway. The next one, improved lateral control for creeping forward to get more visibility. So lateral control is the side-to-side -side motion of the car. So I assume what that means is it's not going to violently turn the steering wheel back and forth as it's trying to uh, creep out to check out what's out there before. So if you get to like a stop sign that's blocked and you can't see, the car will creep forward to get better visibility. But sometimes it does turn the steering wheel fairly violently as it's doing that. So I think that that is an improvement for that. It's trying to get rid of that side-to-side -side jerky behavior. So there you go. Improved modeling of road boundaries on high curvature roads for finer maneuvers. That also could be really nice. So that means going around a very, very severe corner on a road and instead of the car kind of doing the little <laughs> back and I've noted this before, particularly in like left hand turns and stuff where it will jerk the steering wheel back and forth. And so you feel like you're driving with somebody who's never driven before and they're kind of oversteering and overcorrecting. So hopefully that will allow the car to be much smoother through turns or through high curvature roads. That would be really, really lovely if that is the case, because that is definitely a downside. It's very, um, the car, I think you're coming up on some really stop traffic up ahead, FYI. <laughs> so speaking of predicting ahead of time. So anyway, hopefully that will allow the car to behave in a much more controlled, smooth manner. Smoothness is a really, really big thing for full self-driving right now. It, it tends to be a little bit jerky when it gets confused. So everything that it does with smoothness is all to the good. All right, and the last one is improved logic to stay on route or on route and avoid unnecessary detours and rerouting. So I don't know if that logic is better navigation logic or whether it's better planning logic on a moment to moment basis. Because one of the problems that we found thus far is that the car will not pre get into the lane it needs to get into to make a turn or something. So for example, if you need to make a, a right-hand turn, the car will stay in the left-hand lane until the last possible second and then attempt to get into the right-hand lane to make the turn. But you know, at least in Georgia, people don't let it in. So it, then it gets stuck having to go straight and has to reroute itself. So it might be that kind of logic, but it also just might be better logic in terms of navigation logic. So hopefully it's that, maybe I should call it medium term planning, like 20 to 30 seconds. So if it's doing that kind of a thing, that would be really, really helpful if it can navigate uh, in a little bit more advanced manner so that it's thinking about 20 to 30 seconds ahead. That's the big thing that full self-driving is not doing particularly well at this point. All right, so I hope that is, is helpful. Um, thank you to the people on Twitter who have posted these notes to the public because as I said, I haven't got this yet but it is very, very nice to take a look through this, and I'm super excited to get FSD 10.5 and actually give it a, a, a ride myself and give it a shot. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching this. Thank you to my Patreon patrons. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the United States, and happy third week in November to everybody else <laughs> in the world. And enjoy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.